Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to the Fusion Industry Association. My name is Jasmine Mund. I'm a mechanical design engineer with a key interest in the fusion industry. Today is Wednesday, the 23rd of July, 2024, and I'm here to give you your fusion news update of the week. And now on to our key headlines for today's episode. One, EU provides funding for fusion materials testing facility. Two, FIA launches position papers on EU public-private partnerships, regulations and funding. 3. Google buys Fusion Power. 4. Westinghouse and ITER sign a $180 million contract to advance nuclear fusion. 5. World's first steady-state net power nuclear fusion plant gets funding boost. Make sure you stay till the end because, as usual, I have a couple of interesting bonus stories that you definitely don't want to miss out on. 1. EU provides funding for fusion materials testing facility. First up is a story from World Nuclear News, detailing the landmark €202 million Euro investment the European Commission is set to invest in the IFMIF Donetsk or International Fusion Materials Irradiation Facility, demo oriented neutron source, particle facility located in Granada, Spain, a cornerstone project for advancing fusion energy. The facility will generate a powerful neutron environment to rigorously test materials intended for future demonstration future power plants like DEMO. This kind of testing is unprecedented and vital, helping scientists understand how materials will behave under the neutron bombardment found inside fusion plants. A particle accelerator will fire a continuous deuterion beam at a liquid lithium target, generating the critical neutrons needed for this advanced materials research. Dr. Mark Lachaise, Director of Fusion for Energy, or F4E, praised the move, noting that the investment cements Europe's ambition to lead in fusion energy. Spain's Minister of Science, Diana Morant, highlighted the project as a strategic leap that meets both regional and global energy challenges. If Miss Donners will underpin Europe's ambitions in fusion, acting as both a research powerhouse and a symbol of international cooperation. Two. FIA launches position papers on EU public-private partnerships, regulations and funding. Our next story comes from the FIA. Globally, fusion energy is beginning to see unprecedented momentum, yet capital, regulation and public-private synergy are proving crucial for the industry's future. Major European and UK investors, as well as government entities, are pouring resources into fusion, but commercial success faces hurdles such as regulatory clarity and financing that have the potential to unlock rapid scaling. The Fusion Industry Association, or the FIA, has published a trio of new position papers urging the European Union to reform how it governs, funds and partners with the fusion energy sector. The three papers focus on creating effective public-private partnerships, or PPPs, the FIA stresses that fusion demands a large-scale investment and risk-sharing that private capital alone cannot meet. They propose a structured risk-sharing PPP mechanism involving member states and industry to pool resources across fusion supply chain. Developing fusion-specific regulatory pathways. The FIA is urging the EU to define a distinct regulatory regime for fusion, separate from nuclear fission. They warn that applying existing Euratom regulations to fusion adds unnecessary complexity and costs, potentially delaying projects. Scaling EU-level funding for private fusion companies. Citing fusion's critical role in delivering on net zero goals, the FIA notes that although the EU has historically led in public fusion R&D, current funding remains limited. They call for targeted support to convert scientific progress into industrial and commercial leadership. Three. Google buys fusion power. Next up is a story from The Chemical Engineer, where in a landmark commercial deal, Google has agreed to buy half the electricity output, around 200 megawatts, of what could become the world's first grid-scale fusion power plant. This plant, developed by FAA member Commonwealth Fusion Systems, or CFS, will be built in Virginia, a major hub for data centers and technology. CFS, a Massachusetts Institute of Technology, or MIT, spin-out, is designing a 400 megawatt arc fusion plant based on its smaller spark demonstration tokamak scheduled to begin net energy breakthrough tests by 2027. The arc plant aims to be operational and grid connected in the early 2030s. Bob Mungard, CEO of CFS said, we aim to demonstrate fusion's ability to provide reliable, abundant, clean energy at the scale needed to unlock economic growth and improve modern living and enable what will be the largest market transition in history. 
and Michael Turrell called the partnership a long-term bet on technology with transformative potential to meet growing energy demand. Google has been an investor in CFS since 2021. This deal represents Fusion's growing appeal to industries with massive continuous energy needs, such as data centers and AI services. The agreement also grants Google options to purchase power from future CFS plants, indicating the potential for a domestic Fusion power fleet scaling over time. Four, Westinghouse and ITER sign a $180 million contract to advance nuclear fusion. FIA affiliate member Westinghouse Electric Company have signed a $180 million contract with the ITER organization to assemble the core vacuum vessel. The engineering will take place in France and marks a major phase in the world's largest fusion experiment. The vacuum vessel, a double-walled steel chamber, will contain and protect the ultra-hot plasma where fusion occurs. Westinghouse's role includes finishing and welding together nine sections of the vessel to form a single toroidal shell, the precise airtight structure needed for ITER's fusion reaction. This contract is pivotal for both ITER and Westinghouse, placing both organisations at the heart of international efforts to make reliable, carbon-free fusion energy a reality. Notably, it also signals growing confidence among industry players in fusion's practical potential. Five. World's first steady state net power nuclear fusion plant gets funding boost. Finally, we have a story from Interesting Engineering about FIA member Helical Fusion, a Japanese startup founded in 2021. The fusion startup has raised 2.3 billion yen, about $15.6 million, in Series A funding to accelerate the development of its first pilot fusion plant, setting its sights on achieving net electricity from fusion in the 2030s. The firm stands out for its unique helical stellarator type fusion plant, a design favoured for its capability to support steady state continuous power generation compared to traditional pulsed approaches like the tokamak. Helical Fusion's pilot plant project will integrate advanced Japanese gyrotron microwave heating systems and leverage the nation's strength in precision manufacturing. The company's program comprises of two important parts. The first is Helix Haruka, an intermediate device built to validate components and systems. The second is a full-scale pilot plant designed to provide round-the-clock energy called the Helix Kanata. The surge in private support comes as Japan's government is ramping up its own policies to accelerate commercial fusion, spotlighting fusion energy as one of the country's top strategic te technologies. And now, as promised, here are the bonuses. First up, we have the exciting news that the FIA launched the 2025 Global Fusion Industry Report yesterday showing an increase of $2.64 billion in private and public funding going into fusion companies in just the last 12 months. Now in its fifth year, the report aims to provide a comprehensive view of the growth of the fusion sector and progress towards commercial fusion deployment. This year, 52 fusion companies responded, up 23 from 2021, with eight new entrants since last year. You can find the full report on the FIA website, so definitely make sure to check that one out. Second up, I have a fun article from Fizz.org about a new study exploring using fusion propulsion to send a probe to Proxima Centauri b, our closest potentially habitable exoplanet. The analysis found that a 500 kg spacecraft powered by deuterium-helium-3 fusion could reach the planet in about 57 years. While entirely theoretical, the study highlights fusion's potential, not just for clean energy on Earth, but for enabling deep space exploration in the future. Next, I have a bonus from Time about Commonwealth Fusion Systems racing to bring fusion power to the grid by early 2030s. Their Spark facility, featuring powerful superconducting magnets, aims for net energy in 2027. And finally, I have a bonus from New Civil Engineer, covering an interview with US-based FIA member Type 1 Energy after announcing completion of their initial design review for Infinity 2 their advanced accelerator aiming for 350 megawatts of net electricity with grid connection. And that's it for today. I really hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, don't forget to drop a like, comment or subscribe. If you'd like to know more about any of the stories or bonuses mentioned today, as always, the links will be in the description below. And you can follow our Fusion News Extra podcast for a more in-depth look into the topic of fusion energy. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.